Good morning. Another daily devotion with Tabernacle Newbridge. Good to be with you. I trust you are doing well. New Year's resolutions. I'm sure you've all made them. And uh, perhaps this year, uh, many of us have made the one especially where we're going to lose weight. Uh, because during lockdown, most of us who were unable to do anything haven't been able to go swimming or doing a lot of exercise other than walking. And so all we've done is sit in the house and eat. Uh, perhaps we're going to uh, exercise more. We're going to stop using Facebook more. We're going to stop going on I, on um, uh, social media. Uh, but it soon breaks, doesn't it? We soon uh, forget that. And that illustrates, I suppose, the fickle nature of our human selves. At the beginning of this year, 2021, I mentioned last time how important it is that this year becomes a year of prayer. And as we leave 2020 behind us, which was a fairly disastrous year, uh, I want to just re, re, re-emphasise that call to making 2021 a, a year of prayer. See, prayer is a fundamental aspect of Christian discipleship, and we can all have a part in that, both individually and corporately. And that's the wonderful thing about prayer. It's something we can do on our own, and it's something we can do together as a church, whether that's in building or whether that's on uh, a Zoom call or whatever other package people are using these days for their services. Um, And so I just want to continue to look at this subject of prayer. We emphasised last week how important it is that we remember that Elijah was a man just like us and he prayed. But of course, if we're going to have prayer, we're going to believe in prayer, we've got to have confidence in the one to whom we are praying. And um, that really is the key, isn't it? It's not so much whether or not we can pray, because we can all utter the words of a prayer. But we have to have confidence that the one to whom we are praying is there, he's listening, and he has the ability uh, to do something about those requests that we bring to him. We must have complete confidence in Jesus. Now in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 4, and verses 14 to 16, it says these words. I'm just going to read them for you this morning. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. The writer of the Hebrew sets out this wonderful aspect of of going to the throne of grace or the throne of God with confidence. Confidence when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one to whom uh, we pray. We should approach uh, God with with confidence because he is there. That's where we will find the help that we need to see us through this life. The grace and the help in time of need. So what can we learn from those few verses uh, there? The first thing is this, we have to have confidence in the character of Jesus. For it tells us in verse 14 that he is the son of God. He has this unique character. In Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 3, he says, uh, the writer says that God has spoken through his son. And so this is so important that we remember that when we come to pray, we're not praying just to a man. We're not praying to an idol or an icon or a figure. We are praying to the Son of God. How important that is for us today. He is not powerless. He is not flawed. But he is the person who is the creator. Because of that, we can have great confidence in him. We are dealing with this divine being, the creator of all things, the Lord of the universe. And yet that same Lord is waiting to hear from us. What a wonderful thing that is to know that he's there waiting to hear from us. He is unique in his eternity, in his incarnation, in his ministry, his life, his death, his resurrection and his heavenly ministry. And we can have confidence today that when we pray, he is there because he is the son of God. And he's simply waiting to hear our petitions. How wonderful it is. Do you have confidence in the character of Jesus today? So that when you pray, you're not praying to the wall or the ceiling, but you're actually praying to the Son of God. 
That's a wonderful thing to know. We can also then, secondly, have confidence in his experience. Verse 15 talks about his humanity and his humility. It says how Christ experienced life as we know it. See, throughout the Gospels, we see a man in Jesus who feels our weaknesses. He was tired and weary. He was sad and he was hungry. He mourned. You know, it's wonderful because it proves to us that he knows where we are coming from. Because he feels our weaknesses. So when we read those wonderful words in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, Cast in all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. You can do it with confidence because he understands exactly where you are coming from. He's experienced what it is to be confined to a human body, to deal with people, to live in this world. He understands exactly where you are coming from today. He understands our heart, our flesh, our weaknesses. He understands that sometimes we cannot bear those great issues that we sometimes face because it's just hard and tough. But he's been there. And just remember this, he's been to the cross. He endured that great suffering. He has suffered like no one else ever had and ever will. He had suffered in that great way on the cross. That's why, because he walked where we walk, because he has felt how we feel, that means that he can sympathize with our needs. Who better to turn to than a God who has walked this earth, who has walked the path that we walk, who has experienced life on this earth as we do. And then also we can have confidence in his ministry. It says in verse 15 that he is our high priest. Now the wonderful thing uh, about this is that we have to remember that the work of Jesus has not finished. His ministry has not ended. Just because he ascended, ascended to heaven, he has not ended his ministry. But he is the high priest. Now the high priest is the one who represents the people before God the Father. And that's exactly what Jesus is doing today. He's representing us before the Father. In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, it says this, that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. So he's always there. He's always praying for us. And so the wonderful thing today is this. You know that as you pray, he prays. As you bring your petition to him, he takes your petition to the Father. What a wonderful thing that is to know. We can have confidence because he's always listening. Now you know that in the Psalms it says, he who keeps Israel never slumbers or sleeps. And the same God who keeps Israel is the same God that we are praying to. We are praying to a God who never slumbers and never sleeps. So you can always know that he's listening to you. He's listening for your prayers. What great confidence that should engender in our lives and how much that should increase our faith to approach God, <coughs> excuse me, in a way that we know he is listening. So as we start this new year, let's look in confidence to the Lord. The Lord who is there to hear our prayers, his character, his experience and his current role in ministry allows us to have confidence in Jesus. Let's pray more. Let's have more confidence that God is there and he desires to hear our prayers. And call on him for our help. But thank him as well for all his goodness to us. This week, let's pray. Let's reach up to God. Let's call out to him to help direct, to build, to encourage, to convict and to bless. For we can have the confidence that he is there and he is listening. So why not? Let's continue to pray. We're just going to stop and spend a few moments in, in quiet prayer. Uh, this morning I think it would be good if we prayed for a greater understanding and a closer relationship to Jesus.
let's let's learn more about him. Let's pray and ask him to teach us more about who he is, to give us that great confidence in our lives and in our prayers. And then perhaps it would also be good if we prayed for outreach in our communities, for the gospel to go forth in our communities with power and in the name of Jesus. So let's just pray for a few moments. Pray, Lord, we just come before you this morning and we ask that you will bring us a greater understanding of who you are. Bring us into a closer relationship with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that we might have that great confidence in him, in who he is, in what he has done, and the fact that he is there for us. And so we pray, Lord, that you will help us to know you in a greater way. And Lord, as we get to know you in a greater way, we pray that those in our communities will also come to know you. Pray for the outreach, pray for the gospel as it goes forth in our communities and that indeed it will go forth in power and that you will give us the confidence to stand and speak for Jesus who is the Son of God. So we just commit ourselves to you now and ask that you will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen.